Hi everybody and welcome to the 3pm Bake Along. Hi, we are making dairy-free marshmallow squares today. And ta -da -da! So, I'm going to give you a few minutes to get yourself sorted. You will need a large pan or a large bowl and a small pan. <laughs> if you don't have a large pan, then you can use just a big mixing bowl and a smaller pan to melt your ingredients in. So that's what you need, pan. You will also need something to put your mixture in to set it. Now this mixture holds together very well. It's not gonna be like a pourable mixture. It's a lot more like um, cracknel. It's much more like cracknel, Rice Krispie Cakes. So I'm gonna be using a tray, just like this. Baking tray or whatever you would use to make, um, <laughs> whatever you'd use to make brownies or blondies, whatever you use to make, to make your blondies the other day, that is the kind of tray you need. And we are gonna line it with a little bit of foil. So, get yourself a baking tray, pop a bit of foil in there, spread it all out into a tray, and that's it, done. You can use any size you like, you could even put your mixture into cupcake cases if you like and have them in cupcake cases. It will be firm enough to cut up into squares. But whatever you have at home to use to put your mixture in, that will do fine. So I've lined it with a little bit of foil. It's going to help me to get it out of course. Put that to one side and we are ready to go. Now, you only need three ingredients for this recipe. You need marshmallows. I'm using the pink and white kind, but any kind of marshmallow will do. The bigger the better. I'd go for these as your smallest option. If you've only got those mini marshmallows, they will work, but you'll need a lot more of them. The best kind as well is those giant white American style ones. They work really well. So we need our marshmallows, ingredient number one. Then we need our dairy-free butter. This is a dairy-free recipe, so I'm going to be using dairy-free spread. You can also use coconut oil if you like, or you can use butter. If you're not bothered about them being dairy-free, then use butter because that's what the original recipe would have called for. That's ingredient number two. Ingredient number three, Rice Krispies. Now, the recipe works best with Rice Krispies, but the state we are in at the moment, people can't get out, people can't get things in their shopping. So if you don't have Rice Krispies, it will also work with most other cereals. I'd go for like Cocoa Pops would work really well or uh, Cheerios, that kind of thing. Anything that's like firm and small. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do it on a, what's it they're called? The long ones, Weetabix. I wouldn't use Weetabix, that's going to be a weird mixture. But try it out with whatever cereal that you've got. That's all you need really is a kind of cereal. Right then. Those are our three ingredients, marshmallows, butter of some sort, and cereal. This is a very simple recipe, it is very quick, we don't need our oven. All we need to do is melt down our ingredients, mix them with our cereal, and leave them to set. And that is it. Our dairy-free marshmallow squares will be done. So, let's get to it. Whatever pan you are using, whether it be big or small, Pop your pan onto your weigh scales and we are going to weigh out our butter or our dairy substitute first. Woo, we don't need our oven, but we've got our tray lined. You can use kind of any tray really. If you've only got round cake tins, use a round cake tin. All you need is to be able to press the mixture in to the pan and leave it to set. This is also a very good mixture if you are an avid cake maker and you like to like try something different and make something in kind of a sculpture this mixture is basically what cake makers use to sculpt shapes on their cakes they use this kind of marshmallow rice crispy because you can sculpt it into a nice shape of figure or whatever you like and put it on top of a cake and it works a lot better than using the actual sponge so there's a little tip if you are a seasoned cake maker and would like to use this as a sculpting tool, feel free. So, we are going to measure out our dairy-free spreads first. So I'm using Trex dairy-free spread. It's basically the same as, um, as coconut oil. Now, the recipe says three tablespoons. I'm always dubious with tablespoons with this kind of mixture because everyone's tablespoons can really vary. I'm kind of going for not quite level, but not excessively heaped. And I'm going to tell you the weight of what I'm putting in. 
so that we can all be on the same page. Because one person could do a really small tablespoon, someone else could do a really big tablespoon, so it's, it's a little bit ambiguous really, isn't it? So, my three tablespoons equates to, let's make sure it's all going in there, 65 grams. My three tablespoons is the equivalent of 65 grams of dairy-free spread. And it will be very similar if you're using coconut oil. So if you'd rather measure than use your spoons, then you're looking for 65 grams of your coconut oil or your dairy-free spread or your butter, if you're not bothered about it being dairy-free and you fancy using butter. So that's it, 65 grams. Now we need to melt this. We need to get it warm, we need to get it melting. So let's get it on the hob. We'll pop it on the hob. We want that to melt because we are going to be adding our marshmallows to it. But we want to make sure that our spread is melting before we add our marshmallows because that's going to help our marshmallows to melt nicely and not to burn to the pan. So let's measure out our marshmallows. Uh, uh, uh. Tried not to eat them all. We need 280 grams of marshmallows. One bag is 200 grams. So I'm using about one and a half. 200, woo! 280 grams. And one more for good luck. 280 grams of marshmallows. Weigh them out. Have a look at your spread melting on the hot. And we are going to move ourselves over to the hob area so that you can see what's going on over here. Oh, let's put this back over here. So we've got our spread, our, what was it, 65 grams of spread, three tablespoons of spread over melting in our pan. And we've measured out our 280 grams of marshmallows. And we are just coming over to the hob area to see how it's melting. And that is that. Right, tilt this down, see how we're getting on. Don't want it to burn. There we go, great. So, if you've just joined us, we are making dairy-free marshmallow squares. We have just put three tablespoons of coconut oil or dairy-free spread, anything that you're using. You can use butter as well if you want to. We've put our dairy-free spread, or whatever we are using, into our pan, and we've melted it. There we go, melted. Now, we are gonna add 280 grams of marshmallows. Bump. Simple as that, not a lot to do. Put those marshmallows in there, and I've lowered down my heat, because I don't want my marshmallows to burn, or go funny. So, I've just lowered down the heat ever so slightly. And we are mixing our marshmallows, keep them moving, and we just want them all to melt basically. That's it. That's all we want. Our lovely marshmallows to melt. Most of these kind of marshmallows have like a powdered coating on them, which is why it's good to melt your butter or your coconut oil first, because that melt, melted spread, melted coconut oil, takes that powdered layer off a little bit. If you added them in as they are, they probably would still melt, but I find this is just a better way to stop them from going funny in the pan. So there we go. Leave them to melt away for a little bit. I'm going to bring over my bag of Rice Krispies. So bring over your cereal and have them to hand, because once our marshmallows are melted, we're going to be putting in our cereal. Now, the actual recipe is an American recipe, and it uses cups for, to measure out the uh, amount of cereal. And I couldn't find an accurate kind of transfer between cups and grams. Seems like lots of different things have lots of different weights. And Americans only use cups. They don't use grams. They don't use clever things like measurements like that. So, we're going to do what the Americans say, and we're going to add our cereal a cup at a time. So the only other thing you need to have over by your pan is a cup of some sort. I'm going to be using kind of an average sized tea cup, coffee cup, 
Miss Sunshine, little Miss Sunshine, that's me. And I'm going to use that to measure out my cereal when I'm ready to add it to my marshmallows. Now I'm going to higher up the heat, I'm keeping an eye on it so I know it's not going to burn. Higher up the heat and we'll get these marshmallows melting a little bit quicker. How's everyone today on this lovely, drizzly, horrible day? Doing well, I hope. Dun, dun, where's the sun gone? Who ordered the rain? Not me. We had a fun old day yesterday making blondies. Oh, tip, if you made blondies or if you feel like making blondies, they work very, very, very well as a Bakewell blondie. I mean, if, you, if you're a fan of Bakewell tart and the flavours of a Bakewell tart, make yourself some Bakewell blondies because they were absolutely delish. Right. We're getting there now, the marshmallows are melting down. The spread, the dairy free spread, is at the moment staying a little bit separate to the marshmallows, but as they melt, it is incorporating. So don't worry if you've got a bit of like a, a layer of your coconut oil on top of your marshmallows. I've got the same thing. And as we mix it, and as those marshmallows melt, that will incorporate. So don't worry. I'm just keeping it moving. Oh, it looks really lovely. It's got like a bit of a pink hue to it. Oh, we could add some food colouring. Oh, shall we? See, if you're making these for like a party, kids party, something like that, a bit of fun, you could add a bit of food colouring to them, your little one's favourite colour, and make them colourful. Why not? I'd add it once all the marshmallow is melted. So once we get all our lovely marshmallow all melted, feel free to add a bit of food colouring. I'm going to. Why not? I'm just suggesting it. Why the hoot not? I've got some pink. They're already a little bit pink because I had pink and white marshmallows. So I'm going to add a little bit of food colouring to mine and make them pinker. Let's do it. Oh, oh my gosh, there's no, there's none left. No. Let's have this brilliant idea. Ah, there we go. That'll be enough. Mix in my food colouring. Right, all my marshmallows are nearly melted and I can hear them starting to sizzle on the pan. Now be very careful that your marshmallows don't burn to the pan. Keep them moving. Keep your marshmallow moving. It starts to sizzle a bit, lower down your heat. You don't want it to burn to the pan. That would be a disaster. I have no more marshmallows. Oh look, it's so pretty and pink. We do, however, need all of those blobs to be melted. So go through with your spoon or your spatula or whatever you are using to melt your marshmallows and give them a smush. Give it any lumps that you find in there, give them a bit of a smush, make sure it's all nice and smooth and melted. It needs to be really, really smooth. We can't have any lumps in there because it won't spread very well onto our cereal if there are lumps. So just go through, giving it a bit of a smush every now and then when I see a lump. My heat's still on, but it's on low. Great, look at that, perfect. Woo! Lovely melty marshmallow. Fabulous. Now I'm going to turn the heat off once I'm sure that all the lumps are out. Scrape it from all around the edge and turn off the heat. My beautiful pink marshmallow. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Oh, delicious. This is pretty much what jars of marshmallow fluff are. Well, you could use marshmallow fluff. You go to one of the big supermarkets that has like an American section. Marshmallow fluff is delicious. Basically what it is, liquid marshmallow. Use it as a spread. Right then, I'm gonna do this a cup at a time. Whoa, whoa. Okay, one cup at a time. I'm filling up my teacup, Miss Little Miss Sunshine cup, with rice crispies, and we're gonna go home. Well, we may as well do two cups to start, because we know we're definitely gonna need at least two cups. Two cups. Two cups of Rice Krispies going in. We just gotta mix it. That's all there is to it. Now you wanna do this relatively quickly because we don't want our marshmallow to start to set before we've added all of our Rice Krispies. Right, I'm going in. I think I can handle two more cups. So if you're using a cup like mine, feel free to add two more. One, two. Now technically, this is what the recipe asked for. It said four cups, and that's what we've done. Four cups of marshmallows. So we should have the perfect amount. Now 
Now this is going to take some muscle. If you have used a smaller pan to melt down your marshmallow and your butter, you are going to need to transfer it to your big bowl before you add your Rice Krispies, just so that you've got enough space in there to be able to mix it all in with your marshmallow and your Rice Krispies. Right, I'm going to add a few more. What you need is just a good coating of marshmallow on all of your Rice Krispies. You don't want it to be too dry, you don't want it to be too sticky. Kind of looks weird and stringy like cobwebs. <laughs> pink cobwebs. We've made pink cobwebs, everyone. Oh, this would be great for like Halloween treat. Little Halloween treat here. Right then, the marshmallow is starting to cool down and set. So let's get it over and get it into our tray, sharpish, before it sets completely in our pan. Right then, there we go. Let's bring ourselves back over to the table and we can carry on from here. Make sure everything is set back up properly. There we go. Dun, da, da, da. Oh, wobbly camera. Great. Now, let's get our tray over. Here it is. And all we are going to do now is pour our marshmallow mixture into our tray. Oh. Look at the stringiness. It is properly like copper. You could colour it black with black food colouring and have like scary grey cobwebs for eat for Halloween. Ooh, looks good. And now all we need to do is press it into the tin and leave it to set. You could also use this and make some shapes with it. Like maybe Easter time, you can make some bunny shapes. Let's try it, shall we? If you want to make shapes with your marshmallows, then get a little bit of oil Let's use the coconut oil. Make sure your hands are nice and clean. I've already washed my hands. I'm going to take a little bit of coconut oil and I'm going to rub it on my hands. Now, bear with me. I know this is going to sound a bit, seem a bit weird. I'll take off my ring so I don't get goo all over my ring. Rub coconut oil into your hands. Get your hands all nice and slippery, covered in oil. Drop some oil in there. And then I'm going to pick up bits of my marshmallow and I'm going to shape them into shapes. You could make a little bunny, make a little sausage, make a little pink sausage with it. Feel free to do whatever you like. Then all you need to do is leave it to cool and then eat it. Mmm, delicious. If you've used coconut oil, it has a wonderful coconutty edge. Mmm, it's still warm as well, very nice. There we go. You have just made coconut, no coconut, dairy free marshmallow squares. Well, marshmallow shapes anyway. We want to make squares. All we need to do is press this mixture into the tin. I might use my hands since I've got since I've got my oil on my hands. Scrape it all off my spatula. Oh, it tastes good. There's not going to be many of these left, is there? I can tell. Right. Press it all down into your tin. Leave it in the fridge to cool. And then once they're cool, take them out, chop them up, and you're done. How good is that? What a lovely, simple, easy recipe. 20 minutes that's taken us. 20 minutes to make perfect dairy-free marshmallow treats. I love this, I might make this again. How many marshmallows have got left? I might go in again. I've got more Rice Krispies, don't I? There you go. Done. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of you. What am I going to do with the rest of my hour now? Oh no, that means I have to do jobs. I'm going to make some more. I might make these into interesting shapes. Why not? Get the hair out of my way. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. I know it's a bit of a quick one today, but nice and simple. Sometimes the simplest recipes are the best. So feel free to give it a go. You know it's nice and quick and easy now. So when you've got the ingredients you need, whip up yourself some dairy-free marshmallow treats. Have a lovely Wednesday. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm just going to do nothing. Hang on.
around the kitchen for a few hours. <laughs> Tomorrow we are making key lime pie. We've gone a little bit American this week with our recipes. Tomorrow is an American style key lime pie. So if you need the recipe for that, go on to the group under um, post topics, look for recipes and all the recipes for the week are in there. So if you fancy joining me tomorrow for some key lime pie, have a look and see what ingredients you need. And I will see you tomorrow, same time, 3pm. Bye everybody, see you then. Thanks for watching. Oh, send me your pictures. Send me your pictures of, of what you've made with your, mar with your marshmallow squares, marshmallow mixture. I want the most inventive sculptures I can find. <laughs> Bye everybody, see you tomorrow.